On this episode, we're talking about, all right, how to pay your artist manager or your music manager for YouTube SEO purposes, since people don't really know it's called an artist manager. I don't know how that really works. But anyway, look, um, we're back on this book. I'm going to pull some points from this book. All right, this is, we're back in the How to Start series. All right, I'm pulling some points from this book and others. Okay, but this doesn't champion my train of thought when I'm shooting for independence. This is more of a legacy style thinking, more of a traditional publishing record deal type of thing in here. I'm more of the independent a la carte, how to get things going yourself, how to make a brand new style of record situation for the brand new artist. All right. For the artists of 2021 and beyond. This one doesn't do that. This one's more like. Yeah, we updated the label deals from 1996 and gave you a little bit more, but this is kind of the traditional going in the front door, and this might be the last time, other than pulling a few points from this book, that you see this book on this channel because it's just too antiquated for my taste. Anyway, look, we got to jump into Copyright Explained. I want you to watch it if you need a refresher, right? I feel that some people may need that if they're going to learn how I'm pulling from some points in this video and making these percentages work, you need to know where the money's coming from. So watch Copyright Explained. Now, if you want to donate to the channel, you can right over here. If you're so inclined in copyright that you want to skip it, you can hit the chapter skip buttons below. Let's jump into Copyright Explained. Copyright, the sole right which an author has in their own original literary compositions. The exclusive right of an author to print, publish, and vend their own literary works for their own benefit. Now, of course, there are two main rights of copy that the music industry operates and revolves around, and that's the masters and the publishing. And the masters is referred to as the sound recording copyright. Sound recordings as in records, masters, phonogram, or the audio recording file, i.e. the wave, mp3, aiff, of the composition and or song. Now, you can collect your master recording royalties or the proceeds due from the sale and streaming of the master recording via your distributor like TuneCore DistroKid, and if you have a major label deal, then it's them, all right? Now, you can also collect the performance royalties via the master sound recording via Sound Exchange and PPL over in the UK. Sound Exchange is based here in America. And if you are outside of America, any other organization that collects these sound recording performance royalties are referred to as neighboring rights. Now, publishing is referred to as a performing arts copyright here in America. Okay, performing arts as in the composition, sheet, music, MIDI files, publishing, or song to be performed. You can collect the performance royalties for the composition via BMI, CSAC, ASCAP here in America and PRS over in the UK. And other countries have their own performing rights organization as well to collect those royalties for you. All right. Now, you can collect the mechanical royalties due from the composition via Harry Fox, Music Reports and the Mechanical Licensing Collective here in America. You can also collect your mechanical royalties over in the UK from MCPS. So now. Lyric Fine right here. You can get your lyric display royalties from Lyric Fine and Music Match, but that's that. Let's go through the six rights of copyright to be exercised to the fullest extent of the United States Code under Title 17, and that's the right to reproduce. The right to reproduce the copyrighted work in copies or phono records, physical or digital format. The right to prepare derivative works. The right to prepare derivative works based upon the copyrighted work. The right to distribute, the right to distribute copies or phono records of the copyrighted work to the public by sale or other transfer of ownership or by rental, lease or lending. And then we have the right to public performance, the right to perform the copyrighted work publicly, the right to public display, the right to display the copyrighted work publicly and the right to digital performance. And that's the right to digital audio transmission performance. All right, everybody. So we're back from Copyright Explained. Let's jump into the computer and let's go through some percentages and let's get down to the nitty gritty so you can really learn where your manager will be, will be getting paid. Now, you're going to see some things that will be prorated based on your royalty share or your profit share. But I will explain that as the graphs pop up. So let's jump into the computer. All right, everybody. So we're back inside of the computer. Check this out. Now, publishing income. We got This is going to be the first thing we start with. Now, I got to explain... Uh, like I said in the beginning, you, we're going to have some proration going on here, prorating the rate. 
Now, this collection deal income is based on a uh, one on one writer and one producer. Now, for those of you all don't know collection deals when it comes to publishing, this is like your song trust deal. And I want everybody to know song trust is a publishing company. They are a publishing company. Song trust is a publishing company. Song trust is a publishing company. Now that we got that clear, they usually take 15%. Their deal is called a collection deal. All right. So this is basically, this is my typical 50-50%, one for the producer, 50% for the writer. But let's say if you were in a song trust deal, this is what it would look like. Now, if you're paying your manager a portion of your royalties, okay, from your publishing income, because it, it it's in a lot of management contracts that they get a portion of your publishing royalties, I don't know why some people don't, artists don't negotiate that out. Um, managers, I just want you to think about, I think for you all, record royalties are more important than publishing. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, this is how the artist is eating from their music. They won't really eat from the record royalty. And come on, managers, you got to think that if they do get an advance, like I will go over, you know, later in the show, uh, they will actually... I mean, you will get a piece of the advance. So, you know, just try not to dig into the publishing so heavy. Maybe adjust your percentages. Now, everything managers that you're going to see today is based on 20% and prorated in some areas. So, writer, this is your 50% share. Okay. This is your, this, even though this says 7.5, we just got to double it up because we're on 50%. All right. So, we're prorating it. The publisher is actually getting 15% of your 50% in total that this is. But we have to split it in half. We have to do some basic grade school math to split this in half. So that's 15 divided by 2. So the publisher technically gets in the whole 100% pie, 7.5. And then, of course, your manager is getting 20% of your share here. But technically, because it's a 50-50 split, when it comes to publishing, they're getting 10%. And then you walk away with 32.5% of the whole 100% pie. We don't know what type of deals the producer has going on, so that's why the producer is set at 50, 50%. So don't sit here, artists, and say, oh, that's unfair, they got all 50%. No, I'm just doing this so you see this is your half, all right? This is what you'll walk away with when you when you have one writer and one producer. Let's say you wrote the song, artist, and the producer made the music. Now, the things you don't see here, post-sub-publisher expenses, all right? from international collection you may see this number go down when the royalties have to come from overseas back to your pockets i'm just letting you know that uh post publisher expenses from national collection all right so that's taxes um and, it, and that's taxes here too all right taxes on your uh, uh um your income okay and, of course, I put pre-tax because this number is pre-tax. I don't know how much you may generate in this 32.5%, but in America, you got to pay some income taxes to Uncle Sam. So just be aware of that. All right? So let's go to the next slide. Now, if you did an admin deal, okay, you can start to see how this is eating in. Admin deals are going to be roughly 20 to 25%. I put this in at 25%. As you can see, 12.5 times 2 is 25%. And then the manager, 10% times 2 would be 20%. So, we're again, we're prorated. Okay? This is what the manager is eating into right here. But we can't be mad. Our manager is handling stuff for us. So, don't sit there and say, oh, we can't pay the manager. That's too much. No. This is part of the whole picture. Right? Or this is what you're getting left with. So, you're paying your manager 20% right here. And you got to pay the publisher. And then this is what you're left with if this was a 50-50 split song okay let's go to the next thing co-publishing deal this is not a i'm not a fan of co-publishing deals unless it's absolutely necessary or unless you need to cash out some type of way like you really need need the cash co-publishing deals all right 25 percent okay but it's 50 50 on the publishing so this is what it looks like all right, 50% of your publishing income right here. They're knocking it out. And they take ownership. 
The manager still takes their percentage, and then you take home your 15%. Now, for clarification for my artist, once you are done with the term of your manager, this reverts back to you. The manager does not keep publishing. Okay? The manager does not keep your publishing. They're just eating off of your publishing while they're working with you. If the manager comes in and wants ownership, you got to negotiate that out of the contract. New attorneys, be mindful of that. Don't let the manager sit there and eat your publishing for the rest of your life and 70 years, according to the United States uh, copyright. Okay, now let's keep going. Okay, hey, everybody, quick break, quick break. Don't forget to log on to musicmoneymakeover.com. Download all the books and free guides. If you want to book a call with me or a Zoom call with me, musicmoneymakeover.com slash book a call. All right, you can text me right here, 470-291-5767, 470-291-5767. And also, don't forget to uh, look at the producer's contract course on musicmoneymakeover.com. Back to the show. Artist advance. This is what we're, and I've, I've done this on this channel before, but a typical artist advance, 250K. You know, I mentioned this, I think last week or the week before last in a Pharrell video when I was like, oh, I don't want the advance, bro. I don't need, I don't need $250,000. We good. We straight. I can go find 250. Right. I mentioned that. So, uh, yeah. So this is what it's going to look like at that 250. The lawyer is going to get 5% for writing and negotiating the deal. The business manager will get somewhere around 2% or less for making the transaction happen. The manager is going to take home 20% of that artist's advance. What you don't see here is taxes that you're going to owe because you're making an income at this point. Even though it is a credit advance against future earnings, you're basically making the future earnings right now. That is what an artist advance is. So you don't see taxes that you owe to the crown, ultimately. You don't see these taxes that got to go back overseas to England. All right. So but you got to pay them to the U.S. government. And that's what it is. So now all these people get to take a piece. You get to take home 73 percent. What I suggest is is when the money comes in because it doesn't flow to their pockets. It has to flow into your bank account first. Now, you owe the debt for these people. But what you do is you take out the money pre-tax. You take out a set of, you set aside an amount of the 250, 250,000 that you might owe in taxes. And then you start to pay everybody else out of that. So what I would do is I would negotiate with them that they get paid post-tax. They don't get paid pre-tax, okay? These people should be paid post-taxes. These people should not be paid pre-your taxes. Does that make sense? And as long as that makes sense to you, you'll be in some good standing right there and you'll actually save yourself some money. All right, now, let's keep going. Joint venture deal. Joint venture deal. Now, this is when the label, you know, does a 50-50 deal with you. This is, you, you all remember like from the TLC video, I did the 80-20 deal and I say 80-20 deals aren't going anywhere. Also with the 100 percenters, the under fire deal, I did a 80-20 deal, which is a typical deal now, right? So, but when you're doing a JV deal or a joint venture deal, this is typically what it will look like. Everything is prorated out of your share again. Those mechanical royalties get your response. You're, you're, you're responsible for that. You're responsible for that producer royalty. The manager gets to eat off of those royalties. And then this is what you have left. Now, this is 20% for the manager, okay? This is 4% for the producer, 10% on the mechanical. The thing about this is what you see right here is the reason why this is 7.2% is because we got to add up 7.2 plus 28.8. This, you have to, the label will take out of your money and pay them first. After that, this is what you pay your manager out of right here. Okay. 
That's why it says 7.2%. This is still a 20% stake, but it's prorated. All right. So if this is what you pay your manager, your manager will be paid. Okay. Out of the 36% that is left over after this is taken out immediately. All right. This is simple grade school math. Hopefully you all made it at least to algebra one here in America with this slow school system that we have here. Now, 28.8% is what you have left. Okay. Now, things you don't see. This is what a typical show would look like. You show up to do a show or you got a tour going on. You get paid $50,000 per show on the tour run. OK, this is I should it should be a U.S. dollar sign there. But 50, 50 K. All right. Your lawyer is going to get five percent from taking a look at the agreement that your agent sent over to the lawyer. Your agent's going to get a five percent booking fee. Your manager is going to get a 20 percent cut for facilitating these two people together. Your touring manager on tour will, will take home something like 2%. Your business manager will take home another 2% for making the transaction happen per um, per show. So I do want to say, if and, and, and now here's where the business man manager comes in. This business manager right here should be taking care of all of the numbers to make sure that the tour is successfully financed before it starts. They're running numbers on every location, travel, distance, all of that for that 2% to make sense. Let's say if you do a 10 city run and this is half a million dollars gross that comes in, they're getting 2%. Touring manager will get 2%. Agent is getting 5%. Manager is getting 20%. Lawyer is getting 5%. You take home 66%. What the artist will net pre-show expenses. That's this. But you have to pay for your sound, your lighting, your DJ, your band member, touring mates, background singers. As you can see, we start to cut this out and we start to eat into it, eat into it, eat into it for however much that is. But this 66 percent, this gross profit is thirty three thousand off of this 50. But you got to pay everybody out of that thirty three thousand. All right. So just keep in mind when that manager is cutting up 20 percent, you got to remember you got stuff to pay for. So don't get too fancy and say I want pyrotechnics and I want this gigantic light show because you got to pay for all of that. All right. Now, let's go. Miscellaneous opportunities. Let's say you book in a show. It's, it's called this is called a pickup date. All right. Say you go to Jackson, Mississippi. You got to do a show and then you do a couple quick pickup dates. You go from Jackson, Mississippi and you're going out to I don't know. Uh, you're going to San Antonio and then you end up somewhere in Milwaukee. These are miscellaneous opportunities where you do pickup dates. All right. Lawyer will get 5% if necessary to just do the, do the, 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 you know, the stuff. If the agent picked it up, they'll get 5% and then the manager will take home 20%. Artists, you walk home with 70%. Again, like I said before, you got to remember this is pre show expenses. Now, because if you do a deal where the agent books it and the lawyer has to look over the things, the show expenses will be tallied after. But if you don't need the lawyer and you don't need the agent and it looks like this appearances and self book shows, I don't know why this thing keeps popping up at the bottom. But if you got some self book shows going on that, you know, let's say the manager got a booking contract from the attorney and it's already negotiated how you want it. And everybody that does a show with you has to sign that. Cool. You can move the lawyer out of the way. You can move the attorney out of the way. This is kind of like a club date. You show up at a club uh, or you just you, you, you're so inclined and you know how to do your own run tour runs. You know, all, you got your team, your management team doing it for you without the agent. Then you're walking home with 80 percent at this point. All right. And what you might do in this case not this one, but in this case is what what you will do is you will take and pay for everything pre everybody else getting paid out like you and the manager. So all of the expenses have to be taken care of before taken care of before the manager gets paid and the artist gets paid. Now, look, I know I just went through a lot. I know I did. All right. So I'm almost at the end. We're going to hop into the final verdict of what things look like. Let's go now. Uh. Final verdict, when the label shows interest, all right? Build your team a la carte. Look for a distribution deal with no advance when you have generated at least $50,000 in gross revenue. 
What will it take to get there at today's streaming rates of 0.0038? You're looking at about 13,000 streams. Now, this is gross. This is not what you, you're not going to take home this 50K by yourself. All right. The reason why I said look for a distribution deal, you remember last week I was saying the labels will kick in at about 100,000 in gross revenue. But if you're looking for a distribution deal right here, this is where you want to shoot for. I'm an independent a la carte guy. I don't mind dealing with the major labels when it comes to distribution. But what you can't do is change around my message that I want to give to the people. I just need your services. I just need your services because me and my crew and my agent and my attorney, we already kicking and rocking and rolling over here. We just need to make sure that everybody gets paid out fairly. Fair deal? That's what we're looking for. Anyway, let me hop out of the computer. All right, so we made it to the end. Thank you for watching. Tell me what you thought about this video, okay? Tell me your thoughts on, you know, how you understand how the manager is getting paid from this, all right? So I just want to hear everything you have to say about it. I will answer some questions there. You can text me your questions if you like. And uh, also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. I will see you all later.